Over a century before Crossrail, there existed a cross-town rail route that took passengers and goods from one side of London to the other. A stitched together amalgamation of tunnels, lines and multiple railway companies, only in the last 30 years did the route finally gain a name. And with the recent completion of an ambitious upgrade program, the line is finally being maximised above and beyond its full potential. So what does this all mean? It means there's an entire world of secrets hiding almost in plain sight, which tell a story spanning over 150 years. Some are easy to spot, others you would never know even existed. And all of them paint a fascinating picture of suburban central London in decades past. So come with us as we take you on a tour through the secret history of Thameslink. Hello people of the internet, it's AJ here and uh, I'm kind of on home turf at the moment because we're kind of in South London at the moment as we start today's quest to chart the secret history of the Thameslink route. Now the current Thameslink network extends as far out as Brighton in the south and Cambridge, Peterborough and Bedford to the north. But to keep things simple, we're going to focus on the Thameslink core section. This section started out as a patchwork of lines from various rail companies, as in the 1860s, the Great Northern Railway, the Metropolitan Railway, and the London Chatham Dover Railway came together to form a cross London North South rail route enabling freight and passenger services to cross the capital with ease. With the Metropolitan Railway already having opened their line via King's Cross and Moorgate in 1863, two additional tracks were opened in 1866, connecting the Met to both the Great Northern Railway at the main King's Cross station and the Midland Railway at St Pancras station. And these extra tracks ran all the way down through Farringdon before heading eastbound to Moorgate via Barbican, then known as Aldersgate. Meanwhile, at the same time, the London Chatham and Dover Railway constructed their own connection to this route from their Blackfriars station on the Thames, running through the Snow Hill Tunnel, which itself opened on 1st January 1866. And with that, the first Crossrail line was born. Though actual cross-town passenger services weren't as common as you might think. The route was mainly used for freight, and in fact as freight demand fell in the 1960s, the Snow Hill Tunnel tracks were lifted altogether in 1971, with the King's Cross GNR link also closing in 1977. It wasn't until 1986 that the realisation dawned of how important this rail link could be for passengers, and tracks were relayed through the Snow Hill Tunnel in 1988, as the official Thameslink name was born. And as upgrades ramped up, drastic changes were inbound. Holborn Viaduct Station went in 1990 to be replaced by the now underground city Thameslink Station, King's Cross Thameslink closed in 2007 to be replaced with a brand new Thameslink Station at St Pancras, and the Moorgate branch closed in 2009 as extended platforms at Farringdon cut off the line altogether. Got all that? Good. Now let's start our adventure. Having said that, we're going to cheat a little bit to start. I'm not sure people would specifically categorise Loughborough Junction or Lugabaruga Junction, if you've never been here before, as part of the core section. But I wanted to come here today because there's some pretty interesting things to start off. The secrets start right here. Now Loughborough Junction has two platforms. This is an island platform down the middle. Or does it? Because at one point, the junction splits off into three. Each of those three branches of the junction used to have platforms. Now the west branch, you can't really see anymore, they're demolished, but the track to the southeastern main line, you can very clearly see the platforms are still there. I mean, they're very overgrown and very demolished now. I mean, they were officially closed in 1925. So they're almost a hundred years closed. The fact that they are still visible at all is a Christmas miracle, to be honest with you. Um, but it is fascinating to watch. If you are getting a Thameslink train through via the southeastern main line from Bromley South and places like that, then that's something to look out for as you round the curve heading up towards Elephant and Castle, which I think is where we're about to head to next. Keep an eye out as you travel on the section of line from Loughborough Junction to Elephant and Castle, because there's a total of three abandoned stations on this route with very little to give away their previous locations. Camberwell can be located from a platform-shaped gap in between the centre tracks, Walworth Road is almost completely non-existent, and Borough Road was formerly located on an arch steel bridge just north of Elephant and Castle Station. However, it's when we arrive at Blackfriars Station that the secrets of this line really start to reveal themselves. So here we are at Blackfriars Station, which to me kind of sums up the entire Thameslink network. To me, this is where it all comes together. Doesn't matter how far and wide the various branches of Thameslink network goes, this is where they all come together because this is kind of the start of the southern end of what I call the core section. And it's normally 
very, very busy, but at the moment, it's actually quite quiet. So I'll have a little chat with you and take advantage, shall we? Because there is a lot to talk about here. There's a lot of hidden stuff. What isn't really that hidden is the brand new station building. The station was completely rebuilt, almost from the ground up, about 10 years ago. Not much of the old station architecture remains, but you know what? I like what they've done with the place. It's very nice. But there are still plenty of secrets dotting around if you know where to look. Thankfully, I'm going to tell you where you can look for them. If you come into Blackfriars Station from the south, heading northbound, look left out of the station, you can see just through there, and you'll be able to see some random bridge abutments in the middle of the river, just between the station bridge and the road bridges next to it. What are they doing here? It's almost like they should have a bridge on them. Well, guess what? They did at one point. There used to be two railway bridges next to each other. Blackfriars Station was always on this bridge. That one was more a sort of extra line capacity to run through and as such wasn't really used that much and was eventually dismantled in the 1980s. But the abutments are still there. And my favourite thing, which you can particularly see if you enter the station from the southern end down there, you can get a lovely close-up view of a London, Chatham and Dover Railway emblem crest that's still there, still preserved, and it looks beautiful. Big fan of that. Speaking of bridges, there also used to be another Blackfriars station, Blackfriars Bridge. That one, you have to go a little bit more southbound from the river's edge for that. You have to go a few streets away, look for Southwark Street and Blackfriars Street, the junction in between. And as the railway lines cross over, you'll see under the bridge where the old station entrances used to be. And you can also see from the same junction, a cobblestone road that now has some coffee shops and stuff on it that used to be the road that led up to the Blackfriars Bridge goods shed. That's where vehicles used to come in and collect the freight from the goods shed that was brought in on freight trains. So you can very clearly see that. And if you are on a train passing through there, you can also very clearly see the big sort of space where there used to be tracks and a big shed there. And also, I believe, what used to be the lines, the additional running lines that would run over the now long gone extra Blackfriars Bridge. It's a lot of bridges around Blackfriars, isn't there? It's kind of a theme, isn't there? How about we change it up and go for some tunnels instead? Just north of Blackfriars is where the Snow Hill Tunnel begins and where the current City Thameslink station is located. And usefully, the entrances to this station below street level give us vital clues as to where two stations located above street level used to stand. So I'm now stood just outside City Thameslink station. Now, City Thameslink station on its own doesn't have that many secrets given it was only built in 1990. Although I like the fact that a lot of the signage on platform level still dates from Network South these days. But what's a lot more interesting is what City Thameslink Station replaced, which is two stations, a termini being one of them, that ran above ground on a bridge rather than underground as City Thameslink Station does now. Those two stations were Ludgate Hill and Holborn Viaduct. And what's interesting is that Hardly anything is left of Ludgate Hill and Holborn Viaduct stations. In fact, there's basically nothing. But you can kind of tell whereabouts they used to be because Ludgate Hill station is roughly where the southern entrance to City Thameslink station is. And after just a few minutes walk northbound, we're right here at where the old Holborn Viaduct station used to be. That's right, it's at the northern entrance of the current City Thameslink station. Holborn Viaduct itself is literally just there. The station itself used to be up sort of there, somewhere up there. And now the new station is directly underneath. You can also kind of tell that Ludgate Hill was shut a lot earlier than Holborn Viaducts, given that I was literally able to walk in between where the stations were in a matter of minutes. But you can kind of tell whereabouts it was. And it's fascinating to think that where now you walk into the entrance of City Thames Station and go down, before you'd walk under this very same frontage and go up to the Holborn Viaduct platforms. Heading back underground, it's onwards to Farringdon next through the rest of the Snow Hill Tunnel. Look out the window in this section, you'll be stunned at how much of the old Snow Hill Station and Smithfield Freight Yard can still be seen despite the former being closed over a hundred years ago. And at Farringdon itself, we turn and head eastbound to follow the trail of the old Wine Lines route to Moorgate, now severed after the Farringdon platforms were extended southbound in 2009. The curve and tunnel mounds at Farringdon are easy to spot. The Moorgate platform is now hidden from view but still extant. And at Barbican, both lines and platforms are still in situ. And a sign with the old Thameslink branding colours on it is a dead giveaway of their past life. 
Happily, this section might see use again as part of a plan to increase capacity on the Circle, Metropolitan, Hammersmith and City lines. It's always nice to see a disused line revived and given a new lease of life, so he is hoping that plan comes to fruition. For now, it's time to head back north and explore the most fascinating section of Thameslink there is, King's Cross. So now we've arrived at King's Cross Thameslink. Although technically we haven't, because the station itself shut in December 2007 and was replaced by the current St Pancras Thameslink station. So how do we go about finding this old King's Cross Thameslink station? Well, you'd be surprised about how much of it is still in situ and how much of it you can still see. And there are several really good ways, if you really want to, you can find King's Cross Thameslink. One of them used to be by simply going in the entrance of the King's Cross Thameslink station. Uh, and it was used even after closure for a long time as an extra peak time entrance for the King's Cross Underground stations. But annoyingly, on the day I'm filming this, uh, that entrance is shut. And I'm not quite sure what's happened there. Hopefully, on my previous visits there, I'll have taken some pictures. And if I have, Editing Adam will put them in now because I loved going through that entrance whenever I could because you can literally peek through several locked doors through the windows and look right out basically onto the old entrances to the platforms for King's Cross Thameslink Station. But don't worry, there are still some very useful ways you can find King's Cross Thameslink. And that's why I'm standing in a back alley. See, if you take a little right turn off of St Chad's Place near King's Cross Station, you come down this little alleyway. And so you come down here and you think, hmm, fairly innocuous back alley, don't you think? But right over there is King's Cross Thameslink Station and you can get a perfect bird's eye view of it. A walk down St Chad's Place is a great way to spot the old station. First opened in 1863 as King's Cross Metropolitan and also previously known as King's Cross Midland City. Additional locations to take a peek include down Leak Street, for now, and Field Street. And if you don't fancy walking, just look out the window of a Thameslink train as you pass right on through the old platforms. Simple. So, we found one of the old King's Cross Widen Line stations. But where was the other one? The answer is closer than you might think. And so we arrive at the other King's Cross Thameslink related station that is no longer in use. I'm just on York Way at the moment and as you can very obviously see behind me, that is, that is undisputably King's Cross Station. There it is. But I am stood on the entrance to what was a separate station that you couldn't actually get to if you were on the platforms at King's Cross, but was just down here, just right there, just down there. That is actually an old station entrance. Remember the widen lines from earlier? Yeah, this is kind of the other end of that. Over here, I'll show you what I mean. So for a better view of the King's Cross York Road station, or where it used to be, I've come down to the main King's Cross station. I'm on platform zero and one, and uh, York Road was literally just over there. If it was still there, we could do that thing where we left John on that platform and we could wave to each other and have a conversation barely without raising our voices, except we technically be on different stations. You can very clearly see the tunnel mouth it used to run through, where the track bed used to be, the site where the station was, it was just one platform, that's all it was, and you can see the tunnel mouth where the widen lines used to run through, connect up with King's Cross Thameslink down there, and then go southbound down to Farringdon, then Barbican, and then Moorgate. That's how it all went. Well, except if you wanted to go northbound, in which case you, you wouldn't go via York Road, you'd go via the hotel curve and another platform all the way on the other side of the station over there. Because for some reason, the southbound track ran down here through the York Road tunnel, but going northbound, the northbound track ran through a curve all the way over there. I'm not quite sure how it worked either, but it is very intriguing. I mean, if I've made one thing clear in this video, it's this. Platform nine and three quarters is not the only hidden station thing at King's Cross. And no, I did check. Platform nine and three quarters was never part of the wine lines. You could not ever get a direct Thameslink or wine line service from Moorgate to Hogwarts Castle. Except I think you can't. Hold that thought. 
And one last little secret for you, nip into the nearby Regent's Quarter and you'll find this, the only section of the old York Road tunnel visible from street level. Once upon a time, this was where southbound trains ran through via King's Cross York Road towards Farringdon, Barbican and Moorgate. And when this section was closed in 1977, services from the East Coast Main Line to Moorgate were instead diverted via the Northern City Line. Because ultimately, everything in the end comes back around to the Northern City Line. And with that, we reach the northern end of the Thameslink core. Beyond St Pancras, the route splits again, heading up the Midland Main Line via Kentish Town and West Hampstead, and up the East Coast Main Line as far as Cambridge. And it's here on the lettered Thameslink platforms at St Pancras that our story concludes. Whew, I think that'll just about do it for today's episode of Another Station, Another Mile. I was going to head out a little bit more northbound to Kentish Town and West Hampstead Thameslink, just to show how they were connected to the Midland Main Line out of St Pancras as they are now. But a few things. Number one, I'm absolutely knackered. Number two, my camera's yelling at me that it's about to run out of its second battery. And number three, the Thameslink services are absolutely foobarred. So everything's running about 30 or 40 minutes behind. So, and number four, it's rush hour. So I, I think I'm just gonna go home now and have a nice bath. Thank you so much for locking in once again. We'll see you guys next time. Another station, another mile.